and welcome back for the final part of Goodfellas on the Cutting Room. Mm-hmm. I'm John, and with me, Westy and Matt. Hello. You can get the previous parts here, and now we're on to part three, where we'll be talking about our individual highlights for the movie, and then bringing it home by rating the film out of ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So here we go with our highlights. With the narrative structure being what it is, Goodfellas is like one long string of highlights. Yeah, We've somehow managed to pick one each to talk about, though. Yeah. So, Westy, which are you going yeah. for? Aha. Uh-huh. Bing, bang, boom, <laughs> ping, pow. <laughs> 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 really, really funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you mean I'm funny? What do you think? My absolute favourite, man. I fucking love it. Go fuck your mother. It's... um. It's, I've mentioned improvisation in parts one and two, and I'm going to mention the biggest improvised <laughs> scene in three. Yeah. This is improvised between Liot and I don't know, Liot didn't even know about it. Like it was just Pesci, and you can sense the tension in this. It's so fucking good. It's palpable. It's two shots. It's a back and forth. It ramps it up. It ramps it up. It ramps it up. And I think it's just Liot knowing what to do and how to deliver that. He's like. Get the fuck out of here, Tommy. <laughs> I almost fucking had this guy. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. And you're just like, the audience is like, oh, you're just so relieved at that point. It's just brilliant. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favourites. Bing, boom, pow, boom. <laughs> fucking yes. Yeah. The ad-libbing with the other wise guys is great. It's- oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only bit. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Anthony. Doesn't that Anthony speak? Yeah. Uh, Tommy, oh, whoa, whoa, Anthony. <laughs> Probably not even called Anthony. <laughs> Yeah, because it is based as well on something that happened to Pesci in real life. He used to work at a restaurant in New York, and one day he said to an actual wise guy, hey, you're a funny guy, which apparently did not go down well. And then Pesci told this to Scorsese one day, just offset, just as a bit of chat between them, and he loved it and then integrated it into Tommy's introduction <laughs> in this scene. Yeah. It is something that they added in for the film, but the part where Sonny comes to ask for his money, yeah, seven, seven fucking Gs, yeah, you know me. <laughs> Tommy goes wild. That is based on reality, where Henry Hill said they'd run up huge tabs and then go crazy when they were asked about it. Right. Not sure how to kick the ball on us in the pants, like Tommy does, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pushes the table over. Everyone thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> So for my highlight, I'm going for the Billy Bats murder that takes place in Henry's bar. So Billy Bats has been in prison, right? Hmm. He served his time and not ratted anybody out like a good wise guy. He's a hmm. made man and there's still only about five people turn up for his welcome home party. <laughs> <laughs> Three, I think. I'd be furious as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not even five. <laughs> but the scene is absolute dynamite. I yeah. mean, Billy's being a massive wind-up merchant. Oh, oh, come here. And the tension's almost unbearable because we know Tommy could go off at any minute. Yeah. And the line yeah. that makes him blow. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. In a film full of absolute zingers, that might be the best one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Atlantis by Donovan on the jukebox is great. <laughs> the beating is horrific. I've heard Henry Hill talk about this. Tommy beat him so fucking hard that the pistol fell apart. And Scott says he replicates that in the film. Yeah. But as horrific and shocking as it is, Scorsese makes sure it never seems gratuitous with the quality of the filmmaking and the way it's all shot and put together. I mean, it's just excellent. I think once it's seen, you'll yeah. never forget it. Yeah. 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 And I love Frank Vincent in this scene. The thing is, though, b- before he was cast as Bats, he- he'd met Scorsese and Winkle about the film, and he said, Well, I want to play Paulie. And Scorsese said, Well, what about Billy Bats, though? And Vincent replied, Yeah, he's good, but I've got ideas for Paulie. And Scorsese just turned to Winkler, yeah. clapped his hands together and went, we have our Billy Bats. Like, how, does that, how does that conversation go? What? If I was Vince, I'd be so confused. Like, what? Yeah. What, what has happened? Yeah. You can see Scorsese doing that as well. Yeah. You have a Billy Bats? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he only gets one scene, but what a mark he leaves, Frank Vincent. Yeah. He later said, wherever I go, anytime I go anywhere, they tell me to go home and get my shine box. Yeah, of course, he, <laughs> he gets to kill Tommy in Casino, though. <laughs> That's true, yeah, he gets yeah. his revenge on it. Yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah. Salud, Tommy. And Matt, what's your highlight from the film? Well, I'm kind of going full circle because it, it's what I meant when I said that Scorsese knows what he's doing from a moral standpoint because it's it's Henry's last day. 
when basically all, all those chickens come home to roost, basically, because, right. you know, yeah. it was always going to end up like this. And Scott says, he's saying, yeah, it was all fun and games to start with, wasn't it? But this is how it ends up. This is mm-hmm. what will happen to anyone living this life silent. Up until now, like the editing in this film has had such like a lovely flow to it. It's got that like enticing, seductive feel to it. But now, it's so jagged, it's hectic, frenetic, that like crash zoom in a Henry's face when he's snorting the coke. But I love how in amongst everything else, he's really stressed about that pasta sauce going over. Keep an eye on the sauce, all right? <laughs> really stressed about getting banged down. Keep stirring it, keep stirring it. Yeah, keep yeah. stirring it. Keeps, you know, it's, it's like when we're trying to make Christmas dinner, like trying to get the timings right, really stressful. And I love all those time stamps you get throughout the sequence because you love know, it, the, yeah. fil- the film hasn't done those previously. So mm. it just yeah. throws you all over the place. It takes you out of that like previous rhythm with a real jolt. <laughs> And you know how impactful this scene is because of how much of a meme it's become like. Any time a politician or famous person gets in trouble with the law, you go on social media and they'll be posting that image of Henry looking up through the windscreen at the helicopter. <laughs> That's the shorthand for someone's going to prison and they're trying to get away with it. That's how famous yeah. the scene is. Even the funny guy is a great meme now as well, isn't yeah. it, when he's oh, laughing? Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And I love the music as well because it, it jumps from one song to another when Henry's in that car. So you've got... Memo from Turner by Jagger in there, one of his solo songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magic Bus by The Who, What Is Life by George Harrison, which I love, that's amazing. And then yeah. Managed yeah. By yeah. by Muddy Waters. Yeah. And Scott says he said he wanted it all chopped up, like the music, to portray like that fragmented, haphazard mind of somebody who's paranoid and off the head. Yeah. I mean, yeah. by this point, Henry's life is all over the place. He's a sweaty, anxious mess <laughs> and a drug addict. Stop with those fucking drugs. They're making your mind into mush. You hear me? Take them back. Another great scene at this point is in the restaurant where Henry thinks Jimmy's going to whack him. Mm-hmm. Scorsese gets that dolly zoom shot in there where Henry yeah. and Jimmy don't move in the frame, but the yeah, background seems to get closer, yeah. symbolising yeah. Henry's paranoia. That's, that's just outstanding stuff. Yeah. It is outstanding. Yeah. And you don't even know no. until yeah. you know. Yeah. It's not obvious. It's not like Joe's. No. It's not oh, like no. It, it's not like Vertigo. Yeah. It's just, it's like so subtle yeah. and genius. Yeah. He's not showing off. He's just showing off to himself. Yeah. And he just sits by himself. That's why he wasn't bothered about the audience liking the film. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I've made this. Yeah. I can watch this for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'll yeah. be happy. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I must have watched this film a good 10 times before someone told me about that and it yeah. blew me away. Same, yeah. In the scene at the end when Henry and Karen meet the witness protection officer, he's called Edward MacDonald mm. and he's the real guy. Wow. That worked with Henry Hill. Oh, right. So he's basically wow. reenacting scenes he'd played out with Henry like 10 years earlier. Mm. And the real Henry was kicked out of the witness protection for breaking the rules too many times, <laughs> obviously smuggling drugs and doing whatever else. But I think you can tell that. South County doesn't care about it. And frankly, I don't care whether you're going on. Really harsh. Yeah. I yeah. Don't yeah. Care about yeah. You. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Straight down the line, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is cool. And you can find footage where Edward MacDonald is talking about why Henry failed the witness protection program. Henry's a weak person. Um, he wasn't able to, uh, to discipline himself and to, uh, to change his life. Don't use the phone. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Some boy. <laughs> so a lot of scenes that could have been our highlights in Goodfellas. I think we made three solid choices, though. Yes. <sighs> There's so much more, though. Yeah. There's so much more. Yeah. Westy, this was your pick. So you first, please. Summary and score out of 10 for Goodfellas? Yeah, like, like you said, I've nearly be colours to the mask quite early. I think the way I've talked about it so effervescently throughout the three parts is quite evident. <laughs> um, you know, if you haven't seen this film, you shouldn't really be watching this anyway. But no. if you have, you're going to love it as much as I do or as much as we do because it's impossible to dislike. Mm. It's, for me, an absolute masterpiece. I love it. So for me, it's a bing, bang, boom, bang, <laughs> go and fuck your mother, it's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, massive. <laughs> yeah, a film I loved when I was a teenager, the first time I saw it, and still love now. Funny yeah. and horrifically violent in equal parts. The filmmaking is exceptional. The performances are career-defining for probably every cast member except an hero, and as a book adaptation, it's a great example of one. It's in the subject matter where it really excels for me, or rather how Scorsese pulls us into the subject matter and puts us in that gangland world of exuberance, murder, and, like, non-stop anxiety. Mm. Yeah. Whenever I watch Goodfellas, I feel like I've been sucked into the screen. I feel like I know what it would be like to be a gangster in 1960s New York. Obviously, I don't, but it feels like I do. And that's Scorsese. And you kind of keep it to yourself, don't you? Yeah. And you go for a walk <laughs> like, to the supermarket, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is Scorsese to the film. One of his very best films, so it has to be also 10 out of 10. 
Beautiful. Mm-hmm. And Matt, your summary and score for Goodfellas, please. Yeah, so I mean, you're going to fucking pizza up and head for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to keep it short. Same as you guys have said it all. Look, everyone yeah. knows how good Goodfellas is. If you've somehow not seen it, but you've still watched this, bit weird, but go watch it. You're in for a treat. Is it Scorsese's best? I mean, it, it's impossible to say with some of the competition that he's done. But True. this film has not aged today, so it always has been, and I suspect it always will be, a big old 10 out of 10. Lovely. Of course. So overall, that is good, fellas, with a score of 30 out of 30. Fuck you, pay me, of course. <laughs> 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 and we've made it. Made men. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you like yeah. this episode and what we do generally, please support us on Patreon. Becoming an ATRM patron will get you access to benefits such as bonus episodes of The Cutting Room and also access to our archive of podcasts, over 200 hours in total. The podcasts are also available on our website, all the classics, so please head over there to have a look. Mainly, though, becoming a patron will enable us to carry on making videos and make more of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are at the end, however, and we're all going to go home and get our shine boxes. <laughs> of course we are. Yeah. So <laughs> kick off about it. You motherfucker. You. <laughs> so until next time, it's goodbye. It is. Salut. Goodbye. Goodbye. Done. Yeah. Done. Enjoyed it. Lovely. Should be a funny one. That. Mm-hmm. Funny. Funny how? <laughs> okay, wise guy. Very good. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Westy, what are you doing over there? I'm, just get, I'm sorting out the tea. I'll be two minutes. I'm just getting some stuff together here. Oh yeah, tea. All right. I'll leave you to it. I'm not having a conversation, like. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, get the papers. Get the papers. Always leaving us and get the papers, get the papers. Westy Classic coming up here. I'll be from rags to riches. Ah. Right, that's that done. Garlic a la poly. Rags to rich. What's next? Butternut squash. Ready cut. Butternut squash. Ready cut. Oh, for fuck's sake. From rags to riches. Ah.